Hi everyone and welcome to Vintage Digitals. So I bought this watch online because I really wanted a multi-alarm citizen and I really like this model because it has the extended metal bezel and uh, it has these uh, embossed markings for the mode, light and uh, the button functions. The price was very good, it was $30 plus shipping so I immediately bought it but now it's time to service it and it has a number of issues uh, I'm not to bother about them because the price was good so one of them is that the display is really scratched fairly scratched I wouldn't exaggerate really scratched uh, the micro light doesn't work Let's see if I push it nothing works and the sound the alarm also doesn't work the buttons, however, do press smoothly and they seem to cycle through all the functions of the watch. First of all, it's stripping uh, the case, the buttons, the module out and will polish the glass. You should be able to see the scratches and they are pretty noticeable. And one thing uh, that this glass uh, has which I like and it's in my advantage when I polish it is the fact that look how thick it is that's almost half a millimeter protruding outwards which means uh, I can easily take uh, quite a quite quite a substantial layer from this uh, with sandpaper and then polish it to a nice finish and what I can tell from the get-go is that this part might not be original because you see how it's bent and probably it was from a different watch and uh, the person or whoever fixed this watch or whoever had this watch before at one point they lost the part that contains the piezo ceramic speaker and they put in probably this is the back cover from a different watch let's see if I can push it out and there we go but I'm sure it 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 works nonetheless we're just going to check from four sides if the movement has uh, any resistance and this one seems to come out fairly easily and we can see that actually the uh, writing is uh, one of these metal inserts which I'm really happy about because if it were something uh, printed on the glass you have to be really careful when you're polishing it not to reach a very high temperature that might end up burning uh, the the print if it was printed on the glass but since it's a separate part uh, we're not worried about that okay so there we have the buttons removed and as you can see they do have uh, springs which I like because that's a sign of quality that's how they used to do watches uh, right towards the end of the 70s and beginning of the 80s so the way I take the retainer down is under the microscope I put a napkin over the watch and I'm, I, I will work only I will leave open a recess here so I am able to work and get to the uh, to the retainer and the reason why I put this on top is because they are very spring loaded and they usually ping across the room if you don't have something to uh, cover the watch there is a small chance that they might uh, ping away through this small opening but the smaller the opening it is the less chance they are to spring out and they might just spring in and be collected in the watch it works every time I never had a retainer spring out through the small recess that I leave so I can work with them the way I do it with two screwdrivers I push uh, against the retainer until I pop it out Okay, so here we are with what we need and uh, we are going to use um, sandpaper, uh, it's grid 600. The thing is, uh, 6 or maybe even 300 is good, but as you finish up, you do want to use a finer grid. If you have a thousand, go with that. 
I will work with 600 all the way and afterwards we are going to use uh, a Dremel tool with felt attached on the end and a slurry made of cerium oxide. Always use a flat surface. What I have here is uh, eight millimeter thick glass and it has these rubber pads. This will ensure that it's a completely flat surface. We have our sandpaper and uh, make sure to always take away any labels that you might have from the store. Why you have to do this is because when you're going to press this uh, and you're going to go with the watch like this, when you cross over the label, it, it, it will actually, you will, you will feel it and you will uh, catch the glass of the watch on that small bump the label has, the lamp label will create. So it's important to take away these labels. Don't need that anymore. And here we have some water. We are going to water down the sandpaper before we, we use it. Uh, it will work easier and uh, whatever glass flakes will come off during the sanding process, uh, they will be, they will stay within the water, they won't uh, be loose in the air. And then we're going to put the watch like that. Normally I would lay some scotch tape over this part such that uh, it won't get scratched if, if I change the angle. But because the, the glass protrudes so much, uh, I don't think that will be the case. Make sure we keep the watch flush to the sandpaper and apply even pressure. And at one point we'll see in the water the glass flakes. And I can already see, I don't know if you can see them on the camera, but they're there. And always check for progress. Make sure you have some napkins around just to wash away the water. And you will see at one point um, the scratches will be very, very obvious. And uh, when this will be completely misty, the glass, and we will have no visible scratches, that's the point when we'll stop. So you can see we're making some progress. This is really misty at this point. And be very scrupulous with this because it needs to be it, it needs to be really free of deep scratches and this one still has one if I bend it like this uh, you can actually tell what it is don't be afraid to push against it because it's wet uh, the glass won't overheat and break okay so we are complete and we can barely even tell where, where those scratches were and this is how the uh, all that white stuff is actually glass and now it's time to prepare the polishing compound okay so before we proceed with the polishing you might be wondering why i didn't opt for just polishing out uh, only the scratches and not bother with the entire glass well, the reason is simple. If you want to only polish those uh, areas and you are going to take uh, some fine sandpaper to them and afterwards uh, polish only that area, you will end up with small ditches. And you will end up with something like this. And uh, if you look at this watch, you will say, oh my God, that crystal is perfect. But actually it is not. If you hold it against some light, you can see that there isn't a smooth passage of light uh, as you would expect on a perfect crystal. You can see here in the area it says Cassiotron. There is like a shimmer like uh, light going over a stream of water. So that's where there is a small ditch. For polishing you are going to need like a Dremel tool. I have this, uh, it's a Proxon. It has a felt tip and I usually polish with uh, cerium oxide and this is a very fine powder that you will mix with some water until you get a slurry and uh, you dip this in the slurry and then you will polish uh, the glass. Now this is very messy and I advise you to do all of this <laughs> polishing inside a contained area. 
By the way, you can use this uh, cerium oxide to polish even the metal parts of the watch in the same uh, moment that you polish the glass. I don't know what other use to polish it, but this is something that I have and gives good results. It's important that you cover the entire glass and not just an area to avoid isolated polishing. It needs to be really even. Try to keep your hand as flat as uh, perpendicular to the glass as possible. And as often as possible, check for progress. And you can tell right now that polishing is underway. We'll stop to check for progress. And you can tell right away that this is so much more transparent. We still have to go quite a bit, but you can see that the transparency changed almost immediately. This process is a uh, very hit intensive make sure that um, you do breaks to allow the glass to cool off and now you can see how much smoother the glass is and the result is absolutely beautiful you can see that there is no ripple when we get light across it and you can see that it's absolutely clean And we can do the case as well in the same process, so we're going to polish it up a little bit. Okay, so this is the case looking really good, polished from all sides, almost new looking, glass is perfect now. and. You can see that it's a mess here. Uh, now there is uh, cerium oxide uh, dust in between the glass and I believe you can see it in between the glass and the body of the watch. And the only way to get that out is either you wash it really thoroughly with some brush, but what I do is let it dry out and then use uh, one of these brushes and just brush it out and you will see that um, it will fly out of there from a few brushes. So that is the case complete. I am going to wash and add the buttons and uh, move on to the module. Before we clean up this mess, uh, we will want to polish the buttons and I'm going to show you a little trick uh, on how I used to polish the buttons. I haven't changed the gaskets. So first it's polishing and then uh, changing the gasket. But if you have a Dremel tool with a chuck, you can actually hold the button in the drill's chuck. And then with a piece of, on a piece of felt, we are going to put some cerium oxide and we'll use this to polish the button. You can see it turning dark, that means that a small layer of uh, metal has been taken off the surface of the button, which usually means that it is polished. And that's how we'll do all the buttons. Here I'm showing you how I put in back these little retainers. I use a pair of tweezers to hold them and I will just gently press on the button, lay it on top and then I use this screwdriver to push it in. And there we go. 
Now it's the same for the rest of the buttons. So with the movement it's a matter of stripping it all out, cleaning it, checking the micro light and see how we can repair the faults. And what a surprise, it's one of these ceramic PCBs. Now these were used in the very early stages of digital watches. Uh, afterwards they switched to the normal PCBs that we have. You do see this kind of PCB a lot in the Castle Tron watches. I even have one here. This is from a Castle Tron. You can see that this is, this is ceramic. This is the module, we'll set this one apart. Uh, when you're working with uh, electronics like this, it's good if you have a way of grounding yourself to make sure that any static electricity you have built up in your body won't go into any sensitive electronics. And we can see that this uh, has this diffuser on top, that, that is to make sure the micro light if it shines on the side to give an impression that the light is coming from from behind uh, this rather than from the side and I think I'm not the first one to work on this there we go there you see it I think somebody else has had a go at fixing it we'll test it out with a 1.5 volt source it is working indeed so upon closer inspection under the microscope, I did see why the light, micro light wasn't working. If you have a look right there, you can see that one of the terminals of the micro light isn't soldered to this uh, metal part here. And you can see here a bit of melt in this plastic. Somebody tried to fix this, but they didn't succeed. Probably they didn't do it under a microscope. So the micro light contact was actually pushed underneath so all I have to do is apply a bit of heat here so that the contact is made properly there we go so here we are back with assembly So battery and everything seems to be working as expected. Now to test the buttons, we are going to put it inside the case. This is just a test. We aren't going to put in the faces, the face plate. And cycle through the modes works perfect. And we also have micro light. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. And for situations like this, I like to keep a source of tiny springs around. That should do the trick. And I will put back in this makeshift ceramic speaker that I found it with the watch. And uh, We'll see if it works. And there is the alarm working as well. Uh, I just had to replace that micro spring and whoever fixed this before had a very good idea to put that uh, piezo ceramic speaker on that plate. Um, so yeah, it works. That has been the overhaul and uh, I will not bore you with the cleaning of the bracelet. Ba basically that will be going through the ultrasonic cleaner. It is in good condition. 
I'll just give, show some shots of the final watch on a stand. Thanks for watching and join me again uh, for another cool video on digital watches. Bye.